challenge him, you know, <laughs> and then and then strange things happen. You know, uh, there's a there's a wonderful story about a, a Japanese uh, martial artist who didn't believe in empty force, and he challenged this uh, local uh, Qigong master to a battle, and uh, he had you know he had his swords and he had his sticks and his fighting sticks and all these weapons and the Qigong master would just pick up a, just an ordinary piece of wood off the ground and just touch him with it and he would collapse on the ground. Um, I, I have a friend who is a professor in uh, the California University system who uh, studied with a master like this and one day they were walking uh, outside after class onto the sidewalk in LA and um, there was a slightly built woman was one of their students. Some a robber came by and grabbed her purse, went running down the sidewalk with crowd around, and the uh, master, whose name was uh, Master Choa, came outside. He saw what had just, had just happened. The guy was 40 feet away at that point. Master Choa did like that, just like the Jedi in the movies, you know, like, like that. The guy fell down, mm -hmm. and he couldn't get up. And they walk over to him, and the lady gets her purse and picks it up, and the master says, now don't do that again. <laughs> so the stuff is real, you know. It's even though it's real, and so what's it made of, though? I mean, if you can collect it through mm -hmm. exercise, through different meditations, yeah. Does it is it just the qigong exercises that do that, or are there other ways of working with this energy? Is it culturally specific? There, it's it's a natural force that is part of our life system. I mean, it's essential to life. Uh, the Chinese would say you have to have both polarities of, uh, to be able to live um, in, in, in natural metabolism. We're always digesting food, getting energy, building proteins, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a process that goes on of building and destruction. Um, the, to me, in, in understanding it, the biggest progress that's happened in the last few decades is the Russian work. Uh, they have a different name for it. They call it torsion, mm -hmm. but and they view it as a natural force, a natural aspect of nature. So it's not particular to a culture or particular to a particular kind of exercise. Well, I think certain exercises really help a lot in building it up and learning to control it. Mm -hmm. For most of us in the West, our culture doesn't believe in it. Therefore, we don't teach people exercises to learn to be aware of it or to use it. Therefore, we think it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Um, so the culture does play a role, but I think physically we're all able to handle it. Um, what the Russians have found is that uh, you know, every particle of matter, every elementary particle, electrons, protons, neutrons, have what's called a spin. They, they, they spin just like a top or just like the earth spins around an axis. Whenever one of those particles flips its spin, it generates what they call torsion. It's a torsion wave. It's just like, it, it, it's, a, it's a fundamental force of nature, similar to light, but not the same as light. It carries the spin, or the rotational energy, uh, through space. And it's, it's kind of a new discovery. It's not really in Western physics. It's an aspect of the vacuum, okay? That Einstein, back in 100 years ago, um, put out the idea that you could describe gravity as a curbing of space, okay? Um, he left out the possibility that space can also twist. What the Russians have found is this twisting motion of space is the torsion. And that's what these flipping of particles carries with it. And that is what the basis of chi, that we're actually manipulating space time when we build up chi, when we send chi, when we use chi. Um, and so there really are two polarities, a spin to the right and a spin to the left. One is more like yang, one's more like yin. And the body uh, really kind of needs to have both of these polarities because we're very, very efficient. Mm -hmm. The body does not waste energy. Um, in fact, uh, it's been speculated that the body, pro living systems, all life forms, probably are able to do what they call uh, decrease entropy. We decrease randomness, which means we don't waste energy and we actually create more order than... Uh, than the, in the old days people thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very efficient, and uh, it's the flow of this energy that makes that possible. So um, it's really a, a fundamental discovery that it's going to affect all of physics. And uh, in, in Russia, they have inventions now where they can produce this energy with machines. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you know, we're in the middle of a real revolution where who knows what's going to happen, but it's a lot of exciting possibilities. So now that we've tapped into this kind of energy and we're able to track it with our modern methods, mm -hmm. and um, even though it's been around, obviously, since how long do you think it's been around? Well, the ch in Chinese medicine, it goes back 3,000 years or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, they codified their system. It's called the, um, the, the, the Yellow Emperor, and they have this uh, big book of rules. It's thousands of years old. So, uh, But, of course, in America, it wasn't really discovered until Nixon went to China in 72. And uh, one of the top reporters, uh, J James Reston of the New York Times, got an appendicitis. And he was put in the anti-imperialist hospital in Beijing, where the Chinese doctors worked on him. And um, he was having some trouble uh, with uh, gas or distension or something, and he had a lot of pain. And uh, the Chinese acupuncture doctor had these long needles and worked on him with those. And within 20 minutes, the problem went away. And uh, Kissinger reported what happened to the press. And that's when there was a, like a revelation, basically, this strange mysterious Eastern technique of, of medicine that no one ever heard about mm -hmm. with long needles and it solved the problem. Um, and that was really how acupuncture kind of got discovered and came to America within the next year. Uh, Nixon had started a major initiative in the NIH uh, to study acupuncture. So that's really, it's pretty new for us. It's yeah. kind of the way it was accepted is because it came through more um, it, more official channels. It was and top such. down. Yeah, yeah top yeah, down. So, exactly. So we're finding that this energy is in acupuncture, 3,000 years old. Um, mm -hmm. In the book, and The History of, an occult, of the Occult, mm -hmm. um, the author calls it Factor X and goes all the way back, actually, to the ancient Egyptians, that mm -hmm. there's something going on mm -hmm. with um, psychic experience, long-distance healing, mm -hmm. present healing as well. Mm -hmm. And so is this the same force, do you think, that yeah. is just used in different cultures? It has, it, yeah, it is the same force. It has different aspects to it. Uh, in the way I was saying with the Qigong master, you can separate the yin energy and the yang energy and then project one or the other, but they will also mix the two in various combinations to produce special energies that are tuned to affect a certain organ. Uh, typically, from those two colors or extremes of energy, you get seven colors, let's say, from the, the, the rainbow colors. Mm -hmm. Each one has a certain function, and you can make finer gradations than that. Uh, the, in the Egyptians, they use the same ideas. They also knew a lot about shape. They put a lot of emphasis mm -hmm. into shape. They have certain symbols that actually couple into certain kinds of subtle energy, certain types of, uh, of, this, of this energy. And um, like the pyramid is one famous example. It has very special energy, and it's, it's an example of this. I have a whole chapter in the book about sacred sites and earth energies. Mm -hmm. And um, they carved the hieroglyphics, for example, mm -hmm. very deep into their pillars and into their walls uh, because they believed that it was the shape of the characters that convey the energy. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much the words but it's the subtle energy itself that really has the effect. So it's a really interesting philosophy, and I think it's consistent with everything I've been finding out. And through, it seems throughout other cultures, the idea of statues and uh, or markings or high crosses in Ireland and various other places that people have attributed mm -hmm. um, miracles to mm -hmm. these sites or these shapes um, mm -hmm. because they've been carried throughout traditions for such a long time. Mm -hmm. In New Mexico, there's a beautiful place called Chamayo Santuario mm -hmm. where there's a pilgrimage every year mm -hmm. and many people there claim miracles have happened mm -hmm. either by attending the pilgrimage or by using the dirt that's brought out of the, mm -hmm. the hole yep. in the back of the church. Yeah. So could you speak a little bit about uh, those kind of processes of pilgrimage? Well, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I've been to the church and uh, I have a little wooden model church that I bought there and it, the bottom comes off, and you can put some of the dirt in it. And I've scooped the dirt out and put it in it. And I would, and I still have it. And if there's something really, really important, I might take a little bit of dirt and put it on my third eye or put it on my heart or something. Um, there is a very special feeling there. Um, what I find is that sacred sites all over the world uh, have the same knowledge. But I've been to a lot of sacred sites. Um, I went to uh, you know Stonehenge and. Avebury in England and uh, Chartres in, in France, and I've been to the crop circles in England, which are very, very interesting uh, 
to me, they, they teach us a lot about this energy. They help, help us to pay attention to it. They call our attention to this energy, and that, that may be one of their purposes in being. Um, it is the same type of energy, basically, that is involved in the acupuncture system of the body. It's in the healing system. It's what the Qigong masters use. Um, but in sacred sites, they, they use these two polarities, the yin and the yang energy, in very specific ways. It turns out that the sun shines down and produces both forms of energy, uh, more, maybe more the yin, but really they're both, they're both present in the, when, when the energy lands and the ground absorbs it. There are places in the earth called ley lines that are oftentimes very old. If you take aerial photographs in England, uh, look down, uh, you'll find that the old sites, the churches, the stone monuments, things like that, are often in straight lines over many, many miles. And you'll oftentimes see features, a straight line feature. And on the ground, you can't see it. But from the air, it's apparent there's something there. These are apparently thousands of years old. They're structures. The ground was actually changed, sometimes by fault lines, sometimes by engineering, but digging up the dirt, things like that. And it, it appears to be for the purpose of directing the flow of this life force energy in certain directions and to kind of collect it at sacred sites. So um, it's a very ancient practice. If you look in the Southwest in America, you find the Native Americans have similar stone circles there. Mm -hmm. In South America, you find the same thing. In, in, uh, in South America, you also find uh, these same straight line features, uh, sometimes over hundreds of miles. Uh, they oftentimes manipulate the, the water the, the, the subsurface water in the ground and use it to carry the life force energy. In, in England, um, Avebury is one of the ancient uh, stone structures, very, very extensive with lots of gigantic stones. Um, there, were, there were ceremonies that went on uh, at special times of year, such as the solstice, the equinox, uh, and certain times that mark the harvest or the beginning of planting. Um, which they, uh, I guess the, um, I guess the, the the spring I think is is Beltane and the fall is Lammas, which is the harvest, and Beltane is the planting season, and there's a very powerful long ley line that crosses the entire country of England from southwest to northeast that's aligned with where the sun rises and sets during this very special day of year. Uh, on that day, traditionally, I mean thousands of years ago. Uh, the people would uh, dance and they would sing and have festivals um, and they would basically be using our consciousness to attempt to bring in uh, a bountiful harvest, good weather, things like that. One of the really unusual things about this energy, the subtle energy, is that it, it does respond to consciousness. That's yeah. what makes it so unlike all the forces we're used to in Western science. Um, our minds actually increase the flow of this energy along the ley lines. Uh, when an acupuncturist is working on you with his needles, he's also using his intention. The intention of the acupuncturist controls and affects how the energy flows in the body. That's why um, the placebo effect is so important. Uh,